Roxa Boxin by Alice McLearen, illustrated by Barbara Cooney. Marion called it Roxa Boxin. She always knew the name of everything. There across the road, it looked like any rocky hill, but nothing but sand and rocks and some old wooden boxes, cactus and greasewood and thorny acatillo, but it was a special place. The street between Roxaboxen and the house curved like a river, so Marion named it River Road. After that, you had to ford a river to reach Roxaboxen. Of course, all of Marion's sisters came, Anna, May, and Francis, and little Jean, Charles from next door, even though he was 12. Oh, and Eleanor naturally, and Jamie with his brother Paul. Later on, there were others, but these were the first. Well, not really the first. Roxaboxen had always been there and must have belonged to others long before. When Marion dug up a tin a box filled with round black pebbles, everyone knew what it was. It was buried treasure. Those pebbles were the money of Roxaboxen. You could still find others like them if you looked hard enough. So some days became treasure hunting days with everybody trying to find that special kind. And then other days you might just find one without even looking. A town of Roxaboxen began to grow. Traced in lines of stone, Main Street first, edged with the whitest ones, and then the houses. Charles made his of the biggest stones. After all, he was the oldest. At first, the houses were very plain, but soon they all began to add more rooms. The old wooden boxes could be shelves or tables or anything you wanted. You could find pieces of pottery for dishes, round pieces were best. Later on, there was a town hall. Marion was mayor, of course. That's just the way she was. Nobody minded. After a while, they added other streets. Frances moved to one of them and built her a new house outlined in desert glass. Bits of amber, amethyst, and sea green. A house of jewels. And because everybody had plenty of money, there were plenty of shops. Jean helped Anna May in the bakery. Pies and cakes and bread baked warm in the sun. There were two ice cream parlors. Was Paul's ice cream best or Eleanor's? Everybody kept trying them both. In Roxaboxen, you can eat all the ice cream you want. Everybody had a car. All you needed was something round for a steering wheel. Of course, if you broke the speed limit, you had to go to jail. The jail had cactus on the floor to make it uncomfortable, and Jamie was the policeman. Anna May, quiet little Anna May, was always speeding. You'd think she liked going to jail. But ah, uh, if you had a horse, you could go as fast as the wind. There was no speed limits for horses, and you didn't have to stay on the roads. All you needed for a horse was a stick and some kind of bridle, and then you could gallop anywhere. Sometimes there were wars. Once there was a great war, boys against girls. Charles and Marion were the generals. The girls had Fort Irene, and they were all Girl Scouts. The boys made a fort at the other end of Roxboxen, and they were all bandits. Oh, the raids were fierce, loud, with whooping and stamping of horses. The whirling swords of Ocotillo had sharp thorns, but when you reached your fort, you were safe. Roxaboxen had a cemetery in case anyone died, but the only grave in it was for a dead lizard. Each year when the cactus bloomed, they decorated the grave with flowers. Sometimes in the winter when everyone was at school and the weather was bad, no one went to Roxaboxen at all. Not for weeks and weeks, but it didn't matter. Roxaboxen was always waiting. Roxaboxen was always there. And spring came and the acatillo bloomed and everyone sucked the honey from its flowers and everyone built new rooms and everyone decided to have jeweled windows. 
That summer, there were three new houses on the East Slope and two new shops on Main Street. And so it went. The seasons changed and the years went by. Roxy Boxen was always there. The years went by and the seasons changed until at last all the friends had grown tall and one by one they moved away to other houses, to other towns. So you might think that that was the end of Roxy Boxen, but oh no because none of them ever forgot Roxaboxen. Not one of them ever forgot. Years later, Marion's children listened to the stories of the place and fell asleep dreaming of Roxaboxen. Gray-haired Charles picked up a black pebble on a beach and stood holding it, remembering Roxaboxen. More than 50 years later, Frances went back and Roxaboxen was still there. She could see the white stones bordering Main Street and where she had built her house. The desert glass still glowed, amethyst, amber, and sea green. You can see her house right there. And there's Main Street. Okay, that's the end of the story. This is one of my favorite books. It's so fun that they created their own town and really used their imaginations. Thanks for listening.